Hi, John Hunter from RHEL here. I'm here to introduce you to the Airship. This is our latest, and this is a, an extremely high performance, I, I would say edge of the art, wireless piece. It's been developed for the 212SX, the SA12, the S510, and does wonderful things for the HT1508, and for the first time, the G1 Mark II finally has access to state-of-the-art wireless technology. As with all of our state-of-the-art pieces, we feature a full RHEL connectivity suite on the back. So we've got the high-level input, which allows one to come off the taps on the back of their power amplifier. For the first time, we have XLR input for the 0.1 LFE circuit only. We also have stereo left-right low-level inputs, as well as a standard RCA LFE input. The pairing is as simple as any of our pieces. It's a simple push of this tiny button here, and we do feature an on-off switch, which allows us to do demonstrations. If you care to do it for your friends also, turn it up to turn it on, cut it to turn it off. It allows you to break in and break out during the middle of a cut to let people hear how amazing it is when the rail is taken out of circuit and then brought back in and everything is restored. The physical design of this, and we really do care about the way these things look in your home, is important, but we've kind of quieted things down a little bit. It's a very quiet, soft background color. As with everything we do, form follows function. So the reason that we have all these gill slits in the front of this is to allow a broader, stronger signal to get out to the subwoofer. We've got this beautiful copper mesh backdrop on the inside of it. And overall, it's a perfect mate with the new Siri S's and this quieter gunmetal gray and, and very dark gray finish that we're going for here. We worked really hard here to make the uh, receiver actually bolt up to the new S's. So you simply remove two of these carriage bolts, slip them back in through this, and it rigidly couples to the back panel. It makes it really easy to plug things in and out without having to worry about uh, fiddling with this thing. It's getting away from you. You're trying to hold one, plug it in while keeping it off the ground. It's easy. Additionally, uh, for non-S products, you can also remove the receiver itself from the backing panel and just rest it on the ground and it works fine. So let's talk for a moment about why you might prefer to use an airship instead of conventional hardwired. The sound quality is incredible and I'll get into that in just a moment, but as importantly it allows you to do two things that are really important when you start working around high-end systems. One, it lets you position a unit perfectly. You're no longer tethered to a 33 foot long high-level cable. And the other part is practical. It's fantastic to want to build something like a RHEL 3D theater system, for example, uh, but, but if you can't place the rear channel subwoofer properly, it makes it a very frustrating experience and can be very expensive. What we have in this piece, sonically, is incredible. Um, we stepped to a new 5.8 gig delivery system. These are much faster than the previous 2.4 gig pieces. And it adds a, a, a clarity and a transient snap that's unbelievable. And I'm not just talking about in the bass. The first time I heard the finished first article prototype, I listened for three straight hours and I came away with the conclusion that in about three out of six categories, it was clearly superior to the hardwired copper cable that we normally use. It was faster, it was more incisive, it recovered quicker, you had better reproduction of air in a concert hall. The transient stuff, the, 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 the snap of a snare drum when hit by a, a stick was incredible. These are things that you don't normally associate with any kind of a wireless delivery system.